Talking business news now, we'll now start off with the World Bank, which says Nigeria recorded a larger shortfall among all producing countries in the first quarter of this year due to the sabotage within the oil production system and other factors such as low investment and the COVID-19 pandemic. The Washington-based financial lender in its latest Commodity Markets Outlook report disclosed that Nigeria has a shortfall of 500,000 barrels per day, while Angola and Russia both have a shortfall of 300,000 barrels per day. According to the financial institution, although global oil production rose just under 1% in the first quarter of this year based on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis analysis, it was around 3% below pre-pandemic levels, thereby attributing the increase to the effort of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Despite the modest increase, the bank laments that the oil-producing countries continue to produce below the official target, urging OPEC to outline the oil production volumes of its member nations and allies. And now going by the worsening crisis for a forex-strapped economy, uh, foreign exchange inflows into the Nigerian economy declined in the fourth quarter of last year, owing to lower receipts from the Central Bank of Nigeria and autonomous sources. The latest figures from the Central Bank of Nigeria's quarterly report on foreign exchange flows through the economy shows that the foreign exchange inflows fell by 31.7%, amounting to $9.58 billion. According to the report, foreign exchange inflow through the bank, which stood at $9.18 billion, fell below the $16.83 billion dollar mark in the preceding quarters both all and non all receipts declined as a result of lower receipts from interest on reserves and interbank swaps a disaggregation shows that uh, proceeds from all related sources declined by 12.2 percent to 1.63 billion dollars relative to the preceding period while receipts from non all sources fell to 7.54 billion dollars compared to the $14.97 billion in the preceding quarter. Consequently, the economy also recorded a lower net inflow of $8.41 billion in the fourth quarter, compared to the $19.98 billion in the preceding quarter, reflecting the lower net inflow of $9.81 billion recorded through autonomous sources. And now in this next report, 10 deposit money banks in the country earned a total of 1.57 trillion naira in net interest income last year, up from the 1.49 trillion naira as of December 2020. That's according to reports from the Central Bank of Nigeria and according to the Apex Bank data from their audited financial statements for the period ended December 31, 2021, shows that seven of the banks boosted their net interest income uh, the main source of revenue, while the rest witnessed a decline. The 10 banks are Union Bank PLC, Stambik IBTC, Fidelity Bank PLC, Sterling Bank, Wemmer Bank, First City Monument Bank, Access Bank, Guaranteed Trust Bank, United Bank of Africa, and Zenith Bank PLC. Net interest income is the difference between the revenue generated by a bank from the interest earned on assets such as loans to customers and the interest paid out on customers' deposits. On the international front now, most Asian stock indices fell today as growing fears over the global economy drove investors to dump riskier assets in favor of havens such as the US dollar and government bonds. Financial markets are grappling with multiple risks, including the prospect for aggressive US interest rate hikes, a sharp slowdown in China, surging inflation and the war in Ukraine. European markets look set to follow Asia lower in early trade today now. The Pan region Euro stock 50 features slipped 0.38% to hit 3,641 basis points and London's FTSE features also dipped 0.12% to hit 7,351 index points. Now, news that Russia had briefly cut gas supplies to Poland deepened worries, sending the MSI World Equity Index slump into a 13 month low. There was little let, uh, let up in the selling in Asia, with MSI's broadest index of Asia Pacific shares outside Japan down 0.76% to its lowest level since the 15th of last month. Tokyo's Nikkei was down by 1.4% and bartered Chinese stocks bucked the trend. 
gaining 1.14% of sentiment, got a short-term boost from data showing profits at industrial firms growing at a faster pace in the month of March from a year earlier. And now, Australian consumer price also surged at the fastest annual pace in two decades during last quarter as petrol, home building and food costs all climbed fuel and speculation interest rates could also rise from record lows as soon as next week. This unwelcome news is for uh, this is unwelcome news for Prime Minister uh, Scott Morrison as he fights a tough election where the rising cost of living has become a sore point with voters. Today's data made for painful reading as the consumer price index jumped 2.1% uh, in the first quarter, top in the market forecast of a 1.7% increase. Now, petrol led the charge in prices with a gain of 35% for the year, while the cost of new dwellings climbed a record 13.7%. Food prices also picked up in the first quarter, driven by high transport fertilizer, packaging and ingredient costs. The data bolstered a growing view that the Reserve Bank of Australia no longer needs to keep interest rates at emergency lows of 0.1% and should also tighten soon, perhaps even at its next policy meeting on the 3rd of next month rather than in June. Commonwealth Bank of Australia economists also say that inflation data means the Reserve Bank of Australia should also start raising rates, but they are not changing their call that the first move would be in June after the next round of wages data because of the guidance in the central bank's minutes of its April policy meeting. And talking to market performance, now Tesla Corporation lost $126 billion in value on Tuesday amid investor concerns that Chief Executive Officer Elon Musk may also have to sell shares to fund his $21 billion equity contribution to his $44 billion buyout of Twitter. Tesla is not involved in the Twitter deal, yet its shares have been targeted by speculators after Elon Musk declined to disclose publicly where his cash for the acquisition is coming from. The 12.2% drop in Tesla's shares on Tuesday equates to about $21 billion drop in the value of his Tesla stake, and that's the same as the $21 billion amount in cash he committed to the Twitter deal. Twitter's shares also slid on Tuesday, falling 3.9% to close at $49.68, even though Elon Musk agreed to buy it on Monday for $54.20 per share in cash. The widening spread reflects investors' concern that the precipitous decline in Tesla's shares, from which Elon Musk derives the majority of his $239 billion fortune, could lead to the world's richest person to have to have second thoughts about the Twitter deal. As part of the, twist of the Tesla deal now, Elon Musk also took out $12.5 billion margin loan tied to his Tesla stocks. And he has also borrowed against about half of its Tesla's shares. And Russian energy giant Gazprom today halted gas supplies to Bulgaria and Poland for failing to pay for gas and rubles and the Kremlin's toughest response yet to the crippling sanctions imposed by the West over the conflict in Ukraine. Poland and Bulgaria are the first countries to have their gas cut off by Europe's main supplier since Moscow started what it calls a special military operation in Ukraine on the 24th of February. Gazprom also warns that transit via Poland and Bulgaria would be cut if uh, gas was taken illegally. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also ordered European countries to pay Gazprom, the world's biggest natural gas company, in rubles after what the West froze uh, Russian assets and largely cut Moscow out of the West's economic system. President Putin has also demanded that countries at terms and friendly agree to a scheme under which they would open accounts at Gazprom Bank and make payments for Russian gas imports in euros or dollars that would be converted into rubles. Poland has also repeatedly said it will not pay for Russian gas and rubles and has planned not to extend its gas contract with Gazprom after it expires by the end of this year. 
Up in our business news now, oil prices on the international market extended gains today amid simmering geopolitical tensions as Russia cuts gas supplies to Bulgaria and Poland while hopes of Chinese economic stimulus buoy the demand outlook. Here's West Texas Intermediate Crude recorded a price increase of 0.65% to hit $102.40 per barrel. Brent crude now sells at $105.80 per barrel, registering an upward price margin of 0.78%. Now, Bonnie Light's performance is waxing stronger today with a price surge of 4.87% to sell at $104.60 per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, could all deal its offer $101.90 per barrel with a price date of 5.32%.